last year, as you know, was was not an easy year for for everyone, and uh, digital transformation and disruption really has accelerated as a result of the pandemic. So we've benefited, if that's the right way of putting it, from a, a surge in demand for digital services. Uh, and, our, and our top line, that's our, our gross profit, our, our net revenue line was up 19% with an acceleration in quarter four to 27%. And as we start the year for this year, we're budgeting a 25% a like for like increase that excludes deals or combinations. Uh, and so the, the background, Jeff, is, uh, is extremely strong and has accelerated. In fact, our, our Nadia, I guess, is that that's the right way of putting it, was April of last year. We didn't have a month last year where we didn't grow on a like-for-like -like basis, but April was the bottom uh, plus three. And we've seen sequential improvement in, across the whole of our business as we went through the year. And that's accelerated into January uh, of this year and we think for the rest of the year. So we've benefited, I know it's a, a difficult thing to say at a, a time like this, but we have benefited from uh, the growth and, uh, in demand for digital services as a result of the pandemic. So everything that we saw happening before the pandemic has been accelerated uh, by what's been happening in the last year. So the background is extremely strong. When I look at the two practices that we have, our digital content practice pivoted very quickly uh, during April of last year into areas such as converting live events to online events, robotic production and animation. And in Q2 and Q3, content was stronger than our data and digital marketing, a digital media company or our practice, although that part of the business was still strong. But in Q4, we saw an acceleration of data and digital media and that again has continued into this year and when you look at the numbers of the platforms in q4 of last year google up in like for like growth of 21 percent amazon 41 percent facebook 31 percent you can see why we were starting to do uh, even even better even more strongly in data and digital marketing so uh, all in all uh, extremely strong results and then we announced also a combination today with a uh, a leading award-winning uh, digital content company, Jam3, which will be merged into Media Months as well. Jam3 is based in Toronto, has operations in the US, in Uruguay, uh, and in Holland. So it complements what we're doing in the content area too. Martin, we spent a lot of time, good morning to you, by the way. We spent a lot of time this morning good talking morning. about the, quite frankly, shambolic rollout of vaccines in Europe and why once again, Europe is the laggard as well. Is that one of the greatest headwinds to recovery in Europe, i.e. the slow vaccine recovery, or is there something else systemat systematically which actually makes Europe a uh, just going to be in the slow lane compared with the US and, the, and indeed with Asia as well? Well, we're, we're just over 70% the Americas, uh, and we have great faith in both the North and the South American economies, despite the, the variability of the South American economies. There's a little bit more inflation there, a little bit more wiggle room for our clients, in terms of pricing, we're 20% in EMEA uh, and we're 10% in Asia Pacific. But if you look at the growth statistics for the year, Asia Pacific, the smallest of our regions, was by far the strongest. They're followed by America, uh, North and South America, which were very strong. Europe grew by 11% like for like versus much stronger growth in the other two regions. Uh, and I think to your, to your point, Steve, I mean, there is a, a, a structural issue here. The, uh, the simple fact of life is that Western Europe, that is the, the big five economies, including the UK, so France, Germany, Italy, Spain, the UK, uh, if you look at their share of worldwide GDP over the last five, 10 years, there's been declining. And it is likely to decline in the future too, whether it's due to shambolic uh, implementation of vaccination programs, in Western continental Europe or not. So there is a fundamental secular issue here that uh, you have to deal with. And our expansion, and when I look at the, 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 the nature of our business or the pattern of our business geographically in the years to come, instead of being 70, 20, 10, as I described, it should be 40, 20, 40. We will be looking increasingly to China. We doubled up in China earlier this year, but from a small base, our Indian company will double in size organically this year. 
but uh, we're still relatively small for the, in the context there are total operations in China and India. And those are the markets. So China will be the world's largest market in 2028, not on a per capita basis, but on an absolute basis. Uh, and that's where we will start increasingly to look to for our growth. So I, I, I coming back to the point, I, I really think there are some structural issues that uh, the EU and the UK now uh, freed from the shackles of Europe, although I remain a remainer, but freed from those shackles, maybe we'll have Singapore on Thames or Singapore on steroids. Certainly the budget, I think the Chancellor's budget did have some elements in it, that the, the enterprise zones, the accelerated capital allowances that might stimulate the UK economy a little bit more strongly. Having said that, I have to be quite clear, we're very bullish about 2021. GDP forecasts this year are five to 6%. Next year, 2022, four to 5%. I can't remember, and I don't think you can, when the last time we've had two sequential years where GDP forecasts have been so strong. I, I think the issues will start to arise in the real economy, not in the markets that you so avidly follow, but in the real economy, the problems will start to arise probably in 2023 when we have to figure out how we're gonna pay for all this.